Okay, in this lesson we'll continue working with radian angles of measure and the reason being is we want to get used to them all the time because we'll soon start working with sine and cosine functions and I typically work with radians because it's just unbelievably important for trigonometry and for calculus and for a lot of the cool things we can do with animation. Alright, so let's just kind of get used to these values because normally if you've worked with mathematics at the earlier stages you'd consider this to be 0 degrees and this would be 90 degrees and 180 and 270 and 360 degrees all the way around the circle but we're just going to always think of it like this is you know zero radians and this is going to be you know 1.57 radians up here like this 1.57 radians and here's 3.14 but these values just really are the same as we know now that 1.57 radians is the same as pi divided by 2 so it's just the value of pi divided by 2 so 3.14 divided by 2 is 1.57 radians now let's say we have this angle here that's like this it's normally in degrees that would be say a 45 degree angle when we specify this in radians the better way to do it is you just say oh okay this is the angle is here's pi and if this is half of the angle of measure to pi which is pi divided by 2 and this is one-fourth of the way so the angle is one-fourth of that angle so that's really the same as saying pi divided by 4 pi over 4 like this so this angle of measure here is 45 degrees but it's also pi over 4 radians and so pi 3.14 divided by 4 is going to be the same as 0.785 radians approximately like this but typically you see most things expressed for a lot of things we'll do in the future are going to be expressed like this when I'm talking about an angle I'm you know maybe an angle of 180 degrees I'm not going to say the sine of 180 degrees I'm going to say the sine of pi so if you see something like that you know that I'm talking about this angle of measure it's equivalent to 180 degrees and if you see me use something in a sine function or a cosine function and it shows the sine of pi over 4 now you'll know that it's I'm talking about this angle of measure of pi divided by 4 or 1 fourth of that angle so there's pi over 4 so you it won't take any time whatsoever if we just continue working with these radian angles of measure that these will just become completely natural to you and that's how it's commonly used because we we need radians all the time like I said we'll need it when we calculate linear velocities and angular velocities revolutions per minute things of that nature all have all require radians in measurements we just don't do, use degrees for that and so this is just and besides these end up becoming simpler you'll see with time so let's look at other common angles of measure so that's pi over 4 and that's pi over 2 and that's pi and how about this well if this is this is 3 halves pi right so it's actually think of it this way it's 3 halves pi like this and I wrote it this way for starters because really if you look at this value here three halves that's the same as one and a half times pi because here's pi and there's another fifty percent more is going to be one and a half so basically one and a half pi and here's two pi like this so that's why this is the same as one and a half pi and or three halves pi so but a lot of times you'll see it kind of written like this is 3 pi over 2 alright so that's th at this location so then you can divide things up I mean if you saw something that was pi over 8 pi over 8 is going to be pi divided by 8 so there's going to be pi over 8 like this or pi over 6 oh, that's 8 that's an 8 <laughs> that was an 8 between there and there and pi over 6 you have to just think of it as pi divided by 6 well if you you know if you just think of it for a moment degree wise that's 180 degrees divided by 6 is 30 degrees so pretty soon you're going to know that pi divided by 6 is the same as 30 degrees like that and you're going to know that pi over 4 is the same as you know 
180 divided by 4 is going to be 445 degrees. So you'll just kind of get used to it. And after a while, you just get used to looking at these numbers in radians instead of degrees. And it'll all be the same. So we'll work with that, and then in the next couple of lessons, we'll start working with the sine and cosine function. Now, this should be fairly common to most of you, but I'm going to go revisit it because of the way that, well, I want to show you a few points about it when we use these, like this right here, this here, this little triangle that I just made between here and here and here. has This has a little 90 degree right angle on it here. And we're going to use that because we're going, to, we're going to use it to calculate this length like this and this length like this here. Because based on doing that, then we're generating an x distance and a y distance in this case. And that allows us to find this point right up here on the circle. Because we can find points along the circle with the sine and the cosine functions because they're called circular trigonometric functions. So they have to deal with circles. Right. But we'll deal with that in the next couple of lessons. Then we'll continue on, and those are really easy to deal with as well. And we'll just kind of keep stepping forward with this Math for Animators playlist, and you can find all the rest in the playlist that I have on my YouTube channel. All right, well, that's it for now, and I'll see you in the next lesson.